<laughs> so I think communication is key. Um, just because you're doing something which is good uh, and which uh, clearly has benefits for individual workers and for the company, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen automatically. You have to persuade people that it's the right thing to do and that they want to do it and sometimes that they're going to invest money in doing it. So the way that you communicate that is absolutely vital. And you have to do it at multiple levels. So you have to do it at senior leadership level to get the engagement because as most people would say to you, um, leadership in all of these things, in, in everything in business really, is absolutely key to making things happen. So you have to pitch your arguments in a way to the senior leadership which will resonate, which will matter to those people. And that means understanding the business context of what you're trying to do, understanding uh, the language that you need to use in terms of making it work commercially, uh, and being pragmatic in terms of developing things that are um, not just cost effective, uh, but also that will deliver a return on investment. So that communication at that senior level is absolutely critical. But if you just do that, you still won't get traction. You then have to communicate at different levels down the organization. And it's rather like selling any product, washing powder, chocolate, doesn't matter whatever it is. Uh, you've got to decide who your audience are and how best you can appeal to them. And it's different for different audiences. So senior leadership, we have spoken about. Middle management are a key group because middle management are the people who take high level aspiration and turn it into reality. So middle management needs something which they can understand and which they can see, not only is it a good thing to do, but it's workable. So it's making sure that what you're trying to do um, is practical for that middle management group, because otherwise they can kill it. And they won't kill it because they're bad people. They'll kill it because they have a hundred things to do. And if this is number 99 on their list of priorities, it's not going to happen. It needs to be much nearer the top. And then lastly, you have to engage with the workforce. Um, it doesn't matter if management think that uh, what you were trying to do in health and safety is right. If the workforce doesn't believe in it too, then uh, again, it won't happen. And so pitching the message in a way that appeals to the workforce, trying to use uh, language and channels of communication uh, that make it seem interesting to them, perhaps fun if you can do that, uh, that that's an effective way uh, of doing it. And recognizing that particularly in the modern world of work, we have multiple generations in the workforce. So the channels of communication, the messaging that work for a 22 year old will probably be quite different to the channels of communication and the messaging that work for a 62 year old. Uh, and between there are another two, maybe three generations. So it's understanding your audience. It's putting the message over a consistent message but framing it in different ways to work for your audience. So that, that, that's the, the strategy, if you like. It's then about putting that, how do you translate that into something uh, that a health and safety team can do? Uh, and what we've done is we recognize that some of our people are naturally better communicators than others. Uh, some are good verbal communicators, some are good written communicators, some are just terrible communicators in whichever medium you, you, you try and get them to do it. So we select the people who are better at communication and we give them specific responsibility for tailoring the messages so that they are likely to work for the different audiences. Uh, we then recognize that there's only so much that you can do internally and we work with other people in the company to make it happen. So for our uh, training courses, we work very closely with our learning and development team to make sure that uh, our uh, training pieces, many of which are done through e-learning, uh, that they're configured in a way which is consistent with the other training material that's coming out through the company, but also that it's engaging and up to date with the most modern thinking. Um, and then 
for broader internal communications. We have a strong internal communications department in the company. Um, and again, we work with them to make sure that there's virtually every week something on our main intranet news site about health, safety, well-being. Uh, and so we keep it in the consciousness of the workforce. Uh, we make sure that it never disappears. People are thinking about it all the time. We stimulate debates, online debates, um, so that people are talking about it all the time. And if you do that, which takes a lot of work, but if you do that, it becomes self-sustaining. I think big mistakes, uh, and this is perhaps playing to um, national stereotypes, um, so uh, you may recognise some of this. Um, we are an international company. We operate in uh, over 150 countries around the world. 20% uh, of our people uh, are non-UK working outside of the UK, but still 80% uh, of our people are in the UK. And what that means is, almost inevitably, um, you have the critical mass in the UK to develop programmes. Um, and what we have fallen into the trap of in the past is that we've developed some really good things in the UK uh, and certainly many years ago what we would do is we would develop something that we thought had proven had worked in the UK and say great uh, we'll translate that into Spanish and off you go um, it'll now work in Spain or Argentina or Colombia uh, or wherever it might be and of course that's stupid um, because that uh, imperial mindset uh, that might have worked at the height of the British Empire doesn't work in the 21st century and so what we've found by by making mistakes is that what we do now is we will create the skeleton of a program uh, we will create materials that we think might work, but then we engage with the people on the ground in whichever country is, whether it's Spain or India uh, or Singapore, wherever it might be. And we engage with the people locally to say, look, we're trying to get this message across. Help us to make it work for your people. Or if you think it's not the right thing to do uh, in, in your geography, then don't do it. Um, but getting that co-design of materials and that local sponsorship of what we're doing is something that we have learnt the hard way. Um, but I think we do it better now than we used to. It's still not perfect. I think that's quite difficult for me to answer. You'd probably be better talking to uh, our local teams here about that because I can only give you an external perspective. Uh, but certainly what I've found here in terms of our teams is that there's a huge willingness uh, to do things and there's a huge willingness to engage in uh, both translating things that have been developed elsewhere and they're not all developed in the UK, uh, translating things that have been developed elsewhere into something that's right for the context of Spain but also um, some things developed here in Spain that we've been able to take and apply in other parts of the world including the UK and I think that's a, a mature relationship for uh, an international company with global aspirations, which is what we are, uh, that you end up with good practice being translated from different parts of the company, uh, and it doesn't matter where it comes from. If it's good and it's going to work elsewhere, you, you grasp it uh, and you try and make the most of it. I think we all have a lot of things to learn uh, about this issue wherever we are in the world. Uh, I wouldn't pick Spain out um, uh, 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 as being particularly in need of uh, attention at all. Uh, I think you've got some great things going on here in Spain. Uh, be proud of them. Uh, look elsewhere to see what you can do better. Uh, but don't be shy about um, talking about the things that you do well too and which you can take to other parts of the world as good practice.